Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Great American Novel RPG Game uh, that I'm putting together here with some old friends uh, that we have entitled Devil's Canyon. My name is Chris Tyner and I will be the novelist uh, for this session. Uh, we're conducting our very first live play using the game system that was developed by Christopher Gray, uh, which I purchased on drivethroughrpg.com. And I have to say this is probably one of the most collaborative games that I have ever played in the 35 years of, uh, of gaming. This is my first online recording uh, of one of my uh, games, so I hope that you forgive some of the little minor volume issues that, uh, that we experience uh, through this particular uh, video. Hopefully we'll have that ironed out by the next time we play. Uh, but now, without further ado, the great American novel, Devil's Canyon, Episode 1. Here it goes. Recording. Playing the clown. Yay! Hey, okay. Back. Hi, Christy. Right. <laughs> okay, so just as a quick recap so that we all know that we're on the same page, I'm just going to go through uh, and just kind of read the breakdown of the history that has happened up until this point that brings us uh, to the moment that we're going to be starting the game. Uh, so we're in the town of Devil's Canyon, Colorado. Uh, which has fallen under the thumb of a vicious crime family known as the Crimson Coyote Gang, led by elder statesman Cornelius Mason Callahan. Callahan's gang came to town with, with vengeance in their hearts. Sheriff Ben Loomis, a former U.S. Marshal, settled in Devil's Canyon with his wife and two sons and had been the town sheriff for nearly a decade when his past finally caught up with him. Callahan's sons were captured by Loomis in his, as his final act as a U.S. Marshal, accused of a train robbery gone horribly wrong, resulting in the death of a dozen passengers, including that of a judge's pregnant wife. The Callahan boys were found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging, and the patriarch of the family swore vengeance on, the, on Loomis that day. It took him 10 years to track down the former marshal, but when he did, he paid back his vengeance tenfold. Loomis and his sons were slaughtered in their beds, and the remaining lawmen of the town were gunned down in the streets. Callahan laid claim to the town, enacting a tariff on all businesses conducted in the area, and has set up shop at the local gambling hall. Additionally, Callahan's only surviving son murdered the beloved local brothel madam, earning him the ire of the women he now lords over with an iron fist. Callahan has taken a keen interest in a particular citizen in town, a local inventor, whom he sees potential of a great profit, as this man is a visionary in the field of science. A traveling theater troupe led by a stage magician had been forced to set up permanent shop in town for the amusement of the Crimson Coyote gang and out of necessity made friends with the local tavern owner. The town lives in fear of their new landlords, but Rumor has it that there is a legendary gunfighter that has taken residence at a lonely old ranch near the caves a few miles west. Perhaps he may be the key to rally the oppressed against the rabble that have infested the town. The town now has another reason to mourn. The last man of the law, old Judge McCarthy, is being laid to rest after taking a bullet from one of the coyotes. It is at the graveyard service for this fallen man of the law our tale begins um i'm gonna real quick switch switch over to the whiteboard here so you can kind of see uh what we're looking at here and hopefully that's working do you guys see devil's canyon yes okay uh, and right below that, you see uh, that we've got your character cards here underneath. Now, those will probably stay in place uh, for the majority of the uh, of the game, but if we feel like we need to move them, I can always move those down if need be. Here in the middle of our play area are your setting conflicts. These two conflicts stay on the board uh, pretty much at all times. You can resolve uh, these conflicts uh, once per chapter, but they will always return. 
uh, oppression and fear are our two setting conflicts. And oppression uh, really would be anything that would be connected to the Crimson Coyote Gang. Uh, and fear actually would be anything that deals with any members of uh, the town as a whole, uh, because the whole town is living in fear. And if you are fearful, uh, that is uh, something that you can roll to uh, attempt to resolve as well. Um, I have over on this side uh, some of the non-player characters that you uh, could potentially run into and might be contacts uh, for you. And I'll kind of run them down really quickly just so you have a basic idea uh, of who these individuals are. And I may jump around a little bit because I have them in a different order here on my sheet. So we're going to go down and we're going to visit uh, Pastor Othaniel Finney first. Um, he's the, uh, the town uh, preacher uh, and the man who will be residing over uh, Judge McCarthy's funeral uh, today. Uh, you have Zeke Berkeley. Uh, he is uh, the guy that runs the local gun shop. Um, and he's uh, pretty surly uh, if, you, if you ever get a chance to meet him. Uh, we have Buck Sears right here, uh, who is the guy that runs the, uh, the local tavern. Uh, and uh, he runs a pretty tight ship uh, between both uh, the Crimson Coyote Gang and anybody else coming in there and insists on no violence uh, in the tavern. Uh, then we have Wilburn Griffey right here. Uh, this is the guy that runs the, uh, the general store and the post office. Uh, and just so you know, there are two uh, telegraph machines uh, in town. Wilburn and Buck uh, are the ones that are in charge of those. Um, and both of them uh, are uh, under close scrutiny. Uh, of the Crimson Coyote Gang, uh, and there's only certain hours of the day uh, that any of them can be used uh, between 10 and 11 a.m. and 4 and 5 p.m. Um, Trudy Richards up here uh, is uh, the uh, prostitute that has kind of taken over as the madam uh, of the uh, of the brothel, uh, and she has a real uh, bone to pick uh, with uh, the. Uh, I think it's the son of uh, um, Claiborne uh, that uh, has kind of taken over the brothel uh, for his own means. Um, Dorothy Kane, who is right here. Uh, is uh, the lady that owns the uh, local uh, stables uh, where most of the horses are kept. Uh, the mayor here, Wendell Keegan, uh, is uh, pretty much a coward. Uh, and then we have um, the great Manconi up here who is the uh, leader of the theater troupe and uh, the magician uh, that, uh, that runs the troupe. Uh, he is also living in great fear uh, of the Coyote Gang and is uh, uh, really only performing for them uh, because they, they just seem to uh, really like the entertainment. Last but not least here is uh, Wilburn. Oh, shoot, that's not his, his name. I screwed up. Um, I'm going to have to come up with a new name for this fellow because uh, I copied and pasted. Um, we're going to call him um, Augustus O'Malley. Uh, Augustus? Is that what you said? Yeah. Augustus O'Malley. There you go. He is the town doctor. Uh, <laughs> whom you have uh, not seen uh, over the last week or so, kind of mysteriously. Uh, so that's those guys. And then over here, these are some of the uh, members of the Crimson Coyote Gang. Uh, you've got Cornelius up here in the uh, corner right there. Uh, uh, he is the 
the patriarch of the family. Uh, his son, Waverly uh, Callahan right here, Roland Hazard, uh, which is uh, kind of their uh, hitman, gunslinger, assassin. Um, Jacques Luffy, uh, who, let's see, who was old Jacques? Uh, Jacques, 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 Jacques. Where are you, Jacques? There he is. Oh, he's the man at arms. He's the guy that's in uh, in control of all of the guns. Uh, Ethan Wood, who is uh, Waverly's uh, best friend. Uh, Evelina Treadway, uh, who is a formal cattle rustler and a gambler. Um, you've got Sherwood, Sherwood Callahan, which is Cornelius's brother. Nelson Marl, which is Cornelius's right hand man. Bush Watley uh, is a wrangler for the coyotes. Uh, and then these other two guys we'll get to later because <laughs> I don't want you to know who they are yet. <laughs> uh, so that's, in a nutshell, uh, what we have uh, at this point. So I'm going to switch back here. And let's see, i got to figure out how to turn that off so I can actually see everybody again. And I don't know how to do it. Should be up at the top, I think. There should be a little little banner with maybe a little down arrow that'll pull a menu down that will let you stop sharing. Yeah, one would think so, right? It's on the iPhone. Yeah, would... it might be a different. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure where the stop sharing is on the iPad. Hmm. I, I thought I did that last night. Stop you from sharing, Chris? I can do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just stop me from sharing. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. And I'm back. All right. So that's what we've got. Now, in starting the game uh, right now, we know that uh, this afternoon uh, at the uh, local church, um, they're having a service uh, for uh, Judge McCarthy. <clears throat> Um, and, um, I would assume that, uh, uh, you guys would probably want to attend now, as is the history, uh, of recent funerals that have taken place since the Coyote Gang have been in residence for the last month, because of the fear of this gang, a lot of the townsfolk have refrained from showing up, uh, to these things. Uh, there are usually a smattering uh, of individuals that do attend, uh, but uh, pretty much every time uh, the Coyote Gang has been hanging out uh, just outside the walls of the uh, of the little uh, cemetery there by the church, uh, and not scaring people off, but just making their presence known. Um, so it's about we'll say about two hours uh, before the funeral is, uh, is supposed to begin. Uh, and I will turn things over uh, to you guys and ask you, uh, what are your characters doing uh, prior to the funeral? And I'll go, go at once. <laughs> well, I can... Uh, Go oh, ahead. Ahead, I was going to say, um, my character, uh, Bill McLean, uh, is uh, really just kind of hanging out at, at where he lives. He lives in a, um, a, a, an old church on the outskirts of town. Um, and while he's aware of what's going on in town, he, he doesn't want to have too much to do with it. Um, but he does... He, he is starting to feel um, kind of a, a sense of duty coming along with um, what's going on in town and, and what the gang's up to and, and how things are going. So um, he's, he's 
kind of debating whether or not he's he's going to even show up or even acknowledge what's going on yet. But uh, he's getting to that point. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Dr. Julius Randolph didn't arrive to town too long ago, um, and he's met some folks in the town. And but he's uh, he's 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 in his hotel room in room. I'm not sure where he, he would be staying, with, uh, but he's staying there, trying to make plans on sort of building more of a laboratory and sort of getting settled in the town and getting getting on with some of his experiments. Probably won't be attending the funeral since he doesn't really not really that connected what's going on in the town. Okay. But he may be seeing it out the window of the inn. Okay. Yeah, and that's uh, that's highly likely uh, because uh, I believe the inn is directly across from the church. So yeah, you would actually have a fairly decent view of that. The inn is, uh, is pretty much right next to uh, the tavern and the gambling hall, kind of sandwiched in between. Uh, and yeah, that's right across the street. I'm there. So Miss Miss Tipple walks in um, to the back of the church during the while well, the the thing has already started, and she's just gonna hang out in the back, you know. <laughs> Go, Christy. Uh, <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> no, just let that hang out there for a while. Yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> keep watching this. Um, <laughs> There, I, I wouldn't miss a funeral for the world. Um, the spirits, especially if they are not quite at rest, are, are going to be thick and heavy around any funeral. And it's, you know, it's important to me to make the rounds among the guests and the other attendants. Um, it's nice to see who's grieving. Um, these are these are potentially people I can help remain at peace in, in, through their loss. So without it, even though I don't have ties to the community that go back very long, I'm starting to get a feel for who's who around town. So I'll be there. Okay. Uh, I'm the undertaker, so I, I suppose I have to be there. <laughs> You're kind of required. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll be there because I've been there for every single one of them. Um, just, you know, sort of setting up the body and greeting the people as they come and whoever it was that shows up and just sort of trying to stay out of the way and let people grieve however they want and um, just quietly wait until I can lower the coffin into the ground. Oh, hey, here comes Ryan. That's almost perfectly timed. Yes. <laughs> Success. Yeah. No video, though. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> working on it you're fine because i'm there 90 years old <laughs> um we were actually just discussing they're uh they're discussing what their characters are doing uh prior to judge mccarthy's funeral um and so i'll pose the same question to you uh by the way these these are my friends <laughs> you know mike uh, yeah um, and I don't know what order they're in uh, on your screen, uh, but uh, Kurt, if you'll if you'll wave, that's Kurt. Uh, and then Mike Deweese. There's Mike. Uh, Dana. There's Dana, and Christy. That's Christy. Uh, and as you can see, we've put the character names up on everybody, so that you know if you need to refer to them in character. Uh, their character names are there. So what's old Rusty doing uh, before the uh, funeral? Rub on me on last 10 seconds, sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I take it you're getting drunk beforehand. Smoke <laughs> and peyote, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it is there talk my energy is like really small. So. <laughs> okay, this made problem. You're you're really breaking up. <laughs> we can't understand anything you're saying. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if he turns his video off, he might be okay. Okay. I think by my, I'm having to mic on <laughs> Yeah. Or just by yeah. turning the video off, you might come across like that. Turn your, turn your video off. It's from my foot, so this is, a, this is a first. I'm not turning you to the same. <laughs> you should have it really sounds My like old you're man having a stroke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, like redneck, wet, wild west language. Heavy yeah. Heavy okay, R Ryan, talk again, will you? Hi. Uh, say something longer than hi. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Ru Thompson. Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay, so I might have to trial this again <laughs> next week. <laughs> this is going really well. <laughs> um, okay, Ryan, we're we're probably going to go ahead and move forward. Uh, if if you want to try to uh, sign on again, maybe that'll fix it. I don't know. <laughs> and no answer okay <laughs> um okay so uh elias you uh have um prepped the body uh brought it to uh the church uh for the graveside uh service uh and um uh, let's see, so Lillian and Miss Tipple uh, are in attendance along with you uh, at this point. Uh, from the rest of the town, um, you see um, Wilburn Griffey, uh, the general store manager, uh, has, uh, has shown up, um, and Trudy Richards, uh, the lady that runs the stables, um, no, no, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dorothy Kane, uh, the lady that runs the uh, stables, uh, has shown up as well. Um, other than that, there's just a few townsfolk, you know, that, uh, that you know, but, uh, but aren't particularly close with, uh, that, that ha are arriving as well. And as you guys are coming into um, the cemetery, uh, there's a wagon uh, there with a couple of horses out in front and two of the um, Crimson Coyote gangs are just kind of perched uh, on the sides uh, of the um, wagon uh, and throwing jeers uh, at the small crowd as they arrive. Uh, and uh, it is... Um, uh, Bush Watley, uh, the Wrangler, uh, and Ethan Wood, uh, they're, that are in the back of the, uh, um, the wagon, uh, throwing jeers. Uh, and I mean, they're, they're not attacking anybody, but they're just, you know, causing a little bit of a ruckus, uh, prior to the service. Um, and, uh, when Lillian walks by, uh, they start throwing some cat calls uh, and whistling and uh, and saying, "Hey, baby, show us some magic tricks." Um, and uh, do you say anything, uh, Lillian, as as you pass? Hmm. <laughs> you talk that way to your mother you ain't seen my mother baby what? <laughs> no I, I've seen her and she is not pleased <laughs> uh, my mama's dead you ain't seen her um, so that I little interchange yeah, I just opened the window up a little bit more, and I take notice because I met Lillian the earlier previously. Uh, had some conversations about the supernatural, sure. mm -hmm. some of the things around sort of women's rights and uh, 
when, you know, something my mother was passionate about too, and something that has always been part of my education. And I just noticed that's happening down there. Um, and just going to kind of watch what's going on down there. And also I set my phase two tazimeter up in the window to run some experiments with the sun, see if I can pick up anything going on out there. Okay, sure. Um, hey, explain to me how the tazimeter uh, works. Well, I think you pretty much have to have a degree in physics to understand. <laughs> um, you know, Edison created the first tazimeter, which was just a it sort of measured infrared light. And, uh, and I created one. Um, it was actually my idea. He kind of appropriated it, stole it from me, but that's another story. So that's one of the reasons I left his lab in New Jersey. And um, now I've developed one that I think can harness the power of the sun. I believe there's a connection between science and sort of the spiritual plane and that we can by harnessing the power of the sun perhaps bridge that, that gap i also do seances and things like this uh as part of my so i'm hoping that at, out here in the desert i can get that tazimeter fully operational and perhaps contact the spiritual world in a deeper way so i'm there's a funeral going on i'm putting it in the window just to see if i get any readings on anything Okay. And with your seances that, that you've conducted it, do you feel like you have reached um, the other world? Oh, absolutely. Um, and I don't feel like I'm a charlatan either. I feel like, I mean, I've actually studied the connection between physics and the spiritual world. In other words, the, the gap is a small gap that science can, I believe, bridge. We've bridged it just slightly, which leads me to believe if we can harness more power, more electrical current, we can actually open up perhaps the portal, perhaps mm, even just more than what we've been able to do so far. Now, just out of curiosity here, and this is not something that has to be in the know for the, for the other characters, but Lillian, with your communication with the other side, uh, are you a charlatan? Um, no, no, yes. Well, it's complicated. You feel like maybe through conducting the things that, uh, that you have conducted for show, that there's a possibility that you may have actually made contact? That's correct. And I think okay. that I think it is certainly possible. Occasionally, if enhancements are necessary to establish the proper mood and environment for these um, communications to take place, then then that's okay. You know, whatever. You know, whatever. And then, in your conversations with Julian, then, um, how have you presented yourself? Julius, uh, Julius, please use. I'm sorry, Julius. <laughs> uh, how have you presented yourself to him uh, as, as a true believer uh, or someone that believes that yeah, there's, there's maybe something to this? I believe that I'm holding all of the cards close to my chest for, for the moment. Um, mm -hmm. And especially in the company of one who also recognizes certain um, ethereal truths. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about, the darker side of, of our um, of our enterprise, of our goals. Okay. Okay. Dr. Julius does adjust the tazimeter. He sees she's being harassed given uh, my, uh, you know, favorable relationship with her. I adjust the solar panel on it to shine right in the, directly in the eyes of some of the, <laughs> the, uh, the coyote gang accidentally. All right, uh, and they flinch and they kind of take notice a little bit and try to figure out where that light was coming from. And uh, I, are, are you being discreet about it as far as your presence yeah, in the window? Working in the window and it just happens mm -hmm. it's like a watch sort of. But of course the sunlight that's harnessed there is very, very intense. Hot, mm -hmm. hot, more than just mm -hmm. a little brightness in the eye. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, they, they certainly take notice of that. They're trying to figure out where it's coming from and so forth, but they're not particularly astute. Both of them are probably a little drunk uh, in the afternoon, uh, and they can't quite figure out where it's coming from. So um, I think it's a distraction opportunity to get away from them and maybe join Ms. Tipple at the back of the congregation. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, and at that point, uh, it looks as though, you know, the, the majority of the folks from the town that are coming uh, have arrived. <clears throat> and uh, Pastor Finney uh, uh, motions to draw everybody towards the gravesite. Uh, and he begins his, uh, his service. And he says, good afternoon, good friends and neighbors. And thank you for having the fortitude to stand here with me today to honor the loss of our brother, George Claiborne McCarthy, in light of the opposition our town faces in these dark days. Judge McCarthy was a man of great integrity. He was the last vestige of the law of law and order in this town of Devil's Canyon. And while he was often the source of disdain from individuals who found themselves in his court for issues with property disputes, public intoxication, or disorderly conduct, he ruled his court with love for his fellow man. And it was a rarity to walk out of his court without understanding that he was a good and just man who cared deeply about his community. Judge McCarthy was one of the founders of Devil's Canyon, so named by the Horned Rock Formation that looms above this town. He hammered the nails that hold this church behind me together. And that church stands as a testament to the man who was the pillar of this community. And the fact that this humble and gentle man was struck down in the autumn of his years like a dog in the street is a travesty from which we will never recover. He was more than a friend to us. He was a father, and his presence here will be sorely missed. Please join me in the recitation of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. And at this point, he trails off, lets the congregation kind of continue the Lord's prayer, uh, which is as we forgive those who trespass against us. And at that moment, he looks over at those two uh, Coyote gang members and just gives them a stare down. Uh, and lead us, not into lead us not into temptation. He does not recite that either. And then he eventually picks back up with, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. And now we lay our good friend, Judge Claiborne McCarthy to rest. Godspeed, my brother. You will not be forgotten. Uh, and during the process of this um, uh, little funeral, um, Wilburn, uh, the uh, owner of the uh, uh, general store, um, has been somewhat distracted and he keeps kind of looking up uh, past the church. Um, and uh, those of you that are on ground level uh, kind of catch him, uh, his attention being drawn elsewhere. And up on the hill, you see, see a single lone rider uh, silhouetted in the sunlight uh, uh, atop a horse uh, and just watching the proceedings from afar. Uh, and this, for some reason, is, is making uh, Wilburn uh, a little bit nervous. Uh, and you guys definitely pick up on that for sure. Um, once the service is over, um, the pastor comes over to Elias uh, and says, let's gather up a couple of the, uh, the men folk here and, and we'll lower um, the judge into, uh, into the grave. Uh, and he gets Wilburn, 
uh, and a couple of the other men uh, that were brave enough to show up. Uh, and you guys lower him into the grave. Uh, and uh, a couple of the other guys are uh, responsible for uh, throwing the dirt on. Uh, and so uh, at this point, the uh, the funeral is uh, is adjourned, and you all may uh, make your way wherever you would like to go, or discuss what you would like to discuss. I need a drink. I'm going to the tavern somewhere. <laughs> Have you left already? Bye. Mm. Yeah, she's stumbling away. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would, uh, approach Lillian. Um, so did, did you know Judge McCarthy, ma'am? It, it's nice to have you in attendance. These things don't honestly usually have a lot of people show up and, uh, any soul that arrives is always welcome. I just didn't know if you'd had an opportunity to get to know him. Thank you, sir. I, I, I know him by reputation only and the, the words, um, to send him off were, were well considered and thoughtful. I, you know, it was a beautiful ceremony. <laughs> Sorry, she doesn't laugh. Um. No. <laughs> Everybody grieves in their own way, man. <laughs> yes, the, the, the words. So there have been many. There have been many deaths. I, I take it. Oh, I mean, business has been well. Not the kind of business you want to do well in, unfortunately. But yes, uh, Devil's Canyon has, has seen an uptick, I suppose you could say. Well, thank you for coming. Um, I, may, I may join Miss Tipple for a drink. Uh, what's a lone rider do uh, when he uh, uh, sees the, uh, the crowd dispersing? Uh, he hangs around there for a minute and kind of kind of trots the horse back and forth kind of across the, the ridge there, trying to make up his mind whether to go down into town or turn around um, and eventually decides to just kind of slowly head back home, head back the other way. All right, um, Wilburn uh, Griffey, the uh, guy that owns the uh, uh, general store, uh, also makes his way towards the uh, the tavern uh, to have a nice stiff drink. Uh, so Tipple, uh, you you end up getting there first, um, and uh, the bartender, uh, the owner uh, of the tavern, uh, is uh, Zeke. Uh, no, sorry, is Buck, Buck Sears. Um, and uh, he sees you coming and has your drink ready. Thanks, Buck. What do you I'm usually headed, drink? Uh, whiskey. All right. Or whatever one, is in the bottle. All right. One whiskey, Miss Tipple, right there at the end of the bar for you. Thank you, Buck. I'll head to my usual table, which is in the corner. So I can be away from everybody. What Anyone going to enjoy the rest of the day, Chris? What time <laughs> are we looking at right now? Is it is it cocktail time, or was it a little early for that? Um, it's probably about um, yeah, three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, Lillian, uh, where were you heading? I I, I missed that. I suppose I might head up to see um, if Dr. Julius is in. Okay. And then, uh, Elias, you were going to the bar, correct? Uh, yes, I go up and talk to Buck. And uh, Hello, Buck. Sorry we uh, couldn't see you today at Judge, Judge McCarthy's funeral. It was, it was nice as far as funerals go. Well, uh, you know how I feel about it. These fuckers come into our town and are just taking us out one by one. They got the last good one. 
been trying for sure. Um, I, I would like a drink, please. What can I get you today there, Elias? Something strong. This, this was a tough one. I'll fix you up something special. Thank you. He mixes a couple drinks together, slides it down at the end of the bar for you. Yeah, That'll put hair that. on your chest there, boy. Boy, I haven't been called <laughs> that in quite a while. <laughs> Thank you, Buck. Uh, just like to sit in quiet for a moment, please, if you don't mind. Well, even though I wasn't there today, let me tell you, I, uh, I appreciate what you do for this town. Thank you. It's not much, glue, not much glue that's going to be able to hold us together. I just wish there was more that we could do. Perhaps one day. I'm just going to slowly sit and sip. Okay. And Miss Tipple's down. Uh, it, it, do you have like a little table uh, that you usually go to? Yeah, I picture it. Maybe you picture it a different place, but I picture it kind of like the bar, and then there's the front of the building, and then mm -hmm. there's a little table. Mm -hmm. Off to the side. That's how I picture it. Mm -hmm. We're in and the you corner. Do, okay. Away from you do, uh, Elias, you do see Miss Tipple there at her uh, usual table, uh, sitting in the corner over there. Um, have you had much interaction with each other, do you think? I don't think I've had a lot of interaction with anybody. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, not anybody living. <laughs> kind of keep to myself. Um, I find it kind of difficult to interact with people on a personal level outside of, you know, pleasantries and offering condolences. Yeah. Um, it's just not anything I've really had a lot of practice with. Um, but I see her over there and sort of lift my drink to her and give her a nod. I appreciate her showing. And uh, decide to go over and try to talk to her for a minute. Okay. As you do, uh, you're going to pass old, old Wilburn. <clears throat> uh, and he's sitting there just uh, milking a, uh, a glass of whiskey. And he's just kind of tapping. His, his knee's just kind of tapping a little bit. And he keeps kind of looking uh, through the swinging doors of the tavern, like almost like he's expecting somebody to show up. Uh, and he just kind of keeps looking over there. Do I walk by him on the way to Miss Tipple? Yeah, mm -hmm. you'll be passing him on the way. I'll stop for a second. Wilburn? Oh, on? Elias. Um, uh, yeah, uh, everything's fine. Uh, sure it was a nice... Uh, Nice little send off for old Judge McCarthy. We, we sure will be missing him. Won't be the same. Seem to be a, a little distracted today, Wilburn. Hmm? Seem oh. To be a little distracted. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. So much. Oh, go on. Uh, so, so much trouble here in this town, and we sure don't need no more. No, we don't. All right. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? You saw that fella up there on the hill, didn't you? Did? Uh, that old boy's been coming down to my shop. Uh, coming down for supplies. I, uh, I think, I think he's uh, holed up up there uh, at the old Ghost Ranch. Uh, you know the old, uh, um, the old church that was up there at, uh, at at the top of the hill at the Ghost Ranch. Uh, I feel like I think he's he's kind of living up there. Um, well, he. Uh, he came into my shop earlier this week, uh, just routine, never really says much, keeps to himself. Um, I asked his name, said his name's Bill, didn't give me no last name. Um, 
and I don't think too much of it. You know, new fella in town, not really in town, just outside of town, kind of keeps to himself. I can't say I blame him with everything that's going on down here. But um, that uh, that fella that dresses in black uh, of Cornelius's group, um, I think Hazard, they call him, Roland Hazard. He, He's that real dark and mean-looking man. Um, he, uh, I see him getting ready to walk into my shop, and uh, this other old boy, big old bushy beard, Bill. Uh, he um, he asked me to to hide him, <laughs> put him uh, put him in my back room. I told him, what are you talking about? And he said, you need to get me in that back room right now. And well, the way he said it, I know he meant business. So I stuck him back there. Uh, Roland, he came in. Uh, he did his shopping, paid me his money, and got out of there. As soon as he left, that old bearded boy just up and walked out didn't say two words to me on the way out now he's been in my shop probably two three times uh since he's been around these parts and somewhere underneath that big bushy beard of his i swear i've seen him before and you know i have a lot of wanted posters that appear at my shop and i can't say for sure but I'd say, looking at those eyes, I remember those eyes from one of them posters. We don't need no more trouble in this town. I don't, I don't want there to be some big gang fight here. It's bad enough as it is. They got their thumb on each and every one of us here. We can't, we can't even shit without uh, asking permission. I don't want him coming in here and bringing in a whole gang of these no, ne'er do wells coming in here and, and stirring things up even further. This town just won't survive it. So I got my eye on them and, and, and I'm just concerned. Thank you for sharing, Wilburn. It's, I'm afraid with the judge gone, well, things are either going to get worse or we're going to enjoy a very shaky, but very, very fragile peace. And if this, this is this Bill, you said? Uh, that's what he said his name was, Bill. Well, if this Bill fellow threatens that, then, then perhaps you need to have a talk with Cornelius. Now, I know you don't like the man, and neither do I, but like you said, we don't need any more bloodshed. I ain't stirring up no shit. I'm going to tell you that right now. I ain't stirring up no shit, and I don't want you stirring up no shit. Now, you got this out of me. You asked me what I was thinking about. That's what I was thinking about. Now, don't you go up stirring shit with those boys because they're going to go up there. They're going to try to murder him, and who knows? He's probably got 15 more guys up there waiting to pounce, and it's just going to be a goddamn firefight. Wilburn, is he buying supplies for 15 people? Well, shit, No. Maybe he's up there by himself, wanting to stay by himself. Well, then he can fucking stay up there by himself for all I care. He wants to come down and buy some stuff from me. That's fine, but I ain't going to hide him in no hidey hole no more. I'm going to tell him to get out if he comes in there and tells me what to do. Wilburn, can we agree to live and let live for a moment? Just let people live. I'll tell well, you, what, Bill, if Bill comes back into town, you, you tell him I'd like to have a word and send him my way. I won't well, talk to Cornelius. I will not try to start any fights. But please, I, I would not mind having a word with him. I have seen my uh, share of death. I don't want more. I suppose I can do no harm. You Thank promised you. me, though. Don't stir up no shit. Have I ever stirred up shit? Well, yeah, you're a good boy. Thank you, Wilbur, and so are you. Now, if you will excuse me, I'm going to go see if I can't talk to the woman in the corner. All right, then. Uh, by, by, by the way, 
Judge McCarthy sure did look good. You made him look good. Well, thank you. That that means a lot. I'm gonna miss him. Jack Black. Huh? Sorry, background. Background. <laughs> um. Before you go to Miss Tipple, I'm going to switch over <coughs> to uh, Lillian and uh, Julius. So, uh, do you just go upstairs and knock on his door there, Lillian? I sure do. Okay. Oh, and you all, just so you know, you have a uh, plot point because we have begun our first chapter. Uh, so anytime one of you want to interject and spend a plot point, you're welcome to do so. Okay, good. I'm still not sure. I think that means take over the narrative, but I think we're just going to... So I open the door. Um, I mean, I, I, did you knock on the door? <laughs> on the door. Um, I peek out a little bit and I say, oh, Lillian, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to see you. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for you. One moment, please. And I, uh, I kind of, I'm dressed very well for this town and wearing kind of a full suit and everything like what you might wear in the city. But for me, it's a little disheveled and rusty. So I straighten myself up a little bit and then open the door and say, uh, yes, how are you? What can I, what can I do for you? Oh, Dr. Julius, is this a bad time? I don't want to disturb you if you're in the middle of an experiment. <laughs> I'm always in the middle of an experiment. It's always a bad time. But, but it's always <laughs> Good time too. Um, shall we go down to the to, to the to the bar and maybe perhaps have a drink? Or well, that would be wonderful. Help you with something? I no. I, I I feel it's a bad time for the town, and I I wanted to see how you were doing. You're always a, a bright shining spot, and with with the whole town in mourning, I you know I was hoping to just have a few words with a friendly face. Absolutely. Let's let, let me please let me buy you a drink down at down at the bar, and perhaps we can we can talk more. J just just one moment, please. And I close the door, and then I quickly go to the mirror and really try to get some of these wrinkles out of my clothes and straighten up and get the tie nice and tight. And because uh, I have them in my in my room, and uh, and we go down to the to the bar. Um, what would you what would you care to drink? Um. Oh wow. I. It's early, I am. Um, it is a little early. I usually don't. That's why I, I usually don't have a drink until you know, five or six until you know, sometimes I just forget entirely and I don't at all. But when I do, I like to come down. I, I prefer Sazerac. If you if you care for one, I'd be happy to order you one. Well, that would be lovely. Um, please. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Bart. I, I forgot your name, uh, bartender. I know I've only been there a couple times, but uh, what, what, what is your name again, sir? Uh, it's Zeke. Zeke? Zeke. Zeke, we, we, may we please have uh, two Sazeracs, please? And uh, please, please, uh, with the absinthe, uh, it's important. Something. Oh, well, big, big spender today, huh? For me, it's the only way to order a Sazerac. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds to me like you got somebody to impress. So Lillian, tell me, what, what, uh, what's on your mind? How was the funeral? Um. It, it was disturbing how how few people there were to to pay their respects. I mean, those those who were it, there. There's certainly unrest in this town, and the the gentleman. I think you may have seen the gentleman in the wagon. I shouldn't even call them gentlemen. There's these disgusting men around town. You bear no resemblance to them, but. I, I'm, I'm nearly beside myself with disgust, with the corruption and the, all of the evil, all of the darkness of this town. Um, I, what, what is it that keeps you here? I, I, I can't stand, what, I mean, our, our theater troupe is stuck here performing for the thing, the coyote thing. but why are you here of your own free will? Well, let me just say, I thank God for your theater troupe being here, because otherwise I don't know what I would do for entertainment. But I, I, why would I come out to this godforsaken place? Yes, I, and I'm afraid, I, I, my guess is that this entire part of the country is like this, not just this town. But I'm here for a science experiment. I, you see, I need the 
power of the sun. And uh, the, by when we did our experiments, it's either come here or go to a place in the Middle East. Uh, and that was too much of a trip. So I chose here to come and try my experiments, which I need the heat of the sun. I need the place in the United States where there's the most heat from the sun, and that is here to set up an experiment with the machine that I'm building. And so I hope to set it up in the desert. First, I need to build a laboratory, some sort of, or buy a building or something, to, uh, what, what, they call, what they call buildings here, and uh, in order to build the machine and then move it out the desert and then do my experiment. Wow. That is amazing. Is there a suitable building available? Well, I haven't, I've been so, I've been in my room working with my experiments. I haven't really gotten out into the town to, to find out. But if you, I mean, there are so many places that are abandoned right now, I guess because of the state of the town, that it shouldn't be difficult for me to find one. I'm not sure if I can afford to buy it and buy the parts for my machine, but I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that I can. Hmm. I worry that the coyote gang is too, is that the, I should call them. I worry. I worry that they may suppress your activities if they if they see that you're um, on the verge of becoming more successful and, and more prominent in the town. Well, it's why I'm trying to really keep to myself because I don't have a choice but to be here. Exactly. But um, and tell me about you. What have you been here long, or have you just traveled in with the troop, or you don't live here certainly? Well. Um, you know, I, I've, I've spoken to you before of how I, how I came to join the theater troupe, um, having come from California, but I don't know how long I can stay with them. I really am heading east. Ah, yes, that's where I'm from. Yes, east. It's the, <laughs> it is the civilized place to be in this country, I must say. I suppose there are very few people who are from this part of the country. Uh, very but. few. I mean, I mean, you have to stay above Washington, D.C., really up in the New Jersey, New York, Vermont, Maine area, I would say, not below that, certainly. Definitely not below that. No, no, certainly not. Well, yes, well, um, well, I don't know what we, what, 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 if I, if, you know, I, if, I mean, perhaps we can, you know, find a way to, I don't know, you know, work together on these different projects. I don't know if there's a possibility. I could use a little bit of help from time to time. I don't know if you have some time to perhaps help with one of my projects. I would could appreciate it, uh, especially given your interest. We have a shared interest in the spiritual and ethereal. I am hoping to break through, mm, through with the use of the tazimeter to possibly. That's the machine I'm making, as I've told you, to possibly break through to the other world. Well, it's crazy, I know, but could be possible. I think it is. I believe it is. I will keep my ear to the ground and if I hear of a building that you might use, I will let you know. And um, in the meantime, I will try to contact the spirits who guide me. Um, there are some, even from this region, who, who may tell me where you could go to find the, the greatest intensity of sunlight. I'll speak to them tonight if I can. So what? Can you really talk to spirits? That's not just part of your magic act. No, what, what, what I share with this town is, is just scratching the surface of, of the full tools available to me to, to reach out to the spirits who guide us from the other world. Have you been able to just communicate with them verbally or physically see them? I can see them. They, they manifest in, um, in ways that I have not really shown in my performances, but I do, I do hear them. Occasionally I see them. Tonight, can we make that happen when the sun goes down, maybe midnight? Would you be able to do it then? And let me yes. I would welcome it. Do we need more people? Or is it how many people typically when I, I've had some communication with that world, but not in the way that you have. And typically we need six people at a table, five people for their energy. I don't know. Uh, and I typically I use put my tasm either in the middle of the table too. And even though 
I don't know. How many people do you need? A circle will suffice. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get some people to join our circle. I would love to see what, what you've been able to achieve. All right. We must be careful of who is invited, though. Um, uh, the, the wrong energy in the room can turn away the spirits. Well, of course. Of course. I'll leave that up. You're the expert in this area, probably more than me. So I'll leave it up to you to decide who, what the proper energy would be based on who you know in this town to invite to the circle. Right. Well, some, I, sometime I would love to hear the stories of the, the experiences you've had, the seances or the happenings um, <laughs> back east with your community. Yeah, they're but trifles. What I'm hoping to achieve is much greater than what I've ever been able to do before. And I think you, just from your own instinct, have already been able to achieve more than me. Thank you. Thank you for the drink as well. It's my pleasure. I wish I had that same drink. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're going to segue uh to bill uh up at uh, ghost ranch um you've taken your horse back and uh, uh are back at home now um <clears throat> well I'm, I'm i'm feeling pretty conflicted um my my Previous life as um, a gunfighter, uh, I, I've witnessed a lot of violence, obviously, and injustice, and um, don't have a lot of a lot of tolerance for that anymore. And I, I was hoping to kind of set up outside of town, um, just away from people, and, and avoid things like this. Um, but I, I'm, I'm feeling compelled to, um, to address this. You know, I, I'm, I'm realizing that, <clears throat> um, you know, even when you, you sort of seek a place of, of, of peace and isolation that, um, you know, uh, Bill, Bill really feels uh, kind of cursed, you know, like, like violence follows him around. And um, he, he's, feeling that uh that he, he rather than trying to avoid it he needs to you know kind of confront it on his terms um and so he's you know re you know he on on his way you know riding back from the funeral he he stopped several times and and turned around and started to kind of trot back into town and and turn the horse around and um you know, really feeling a lot of conflict about this, about getting involved and about um, sort of re-entering that, that potential for violence and that potential to hurt other people. Um, but I think his, his sense of, of right and wrong and, and justice and, and what's happening to these people is um, starting to get the better of him. And um, he uh, starts to head into town. And, and decides to head down into town. Okay. Where are you going to head? Um, <clears throat> I think I'll come, come down the ridge and just kind of take the horse down, down Main Street and uh, see what's going on and, and see, see where people are and, um, you know, just kind of tie the horse up in, in front of the saloon and, um, just take a look around and, and see what he can see. Okay. Once you get into town, um, this is probably your first time actually going into town proper. Um, and uh, it, as uh, our uh, illustrious um, uh, store owner uh, was talking about earlier, you'd come into his shop a couple of times, but he's really just kind of on the outskirts of town just as you're coming in. Uh, since he's connected to the post office, uh, it's an easy <laughs> drop for, uh, uh, for the mail uh, to drop things off there without actually having to come into town. Uh, so, I, as he said, uh, there was one individual uh, of the Coyote Gang uh, that kind of got your dander up a little bit. That Roland Hazard. 
Um, and I had some ideas about maybe how you guys might have come across each other, but why don't you tell me what you think uh, your guys' history is? Well, I, I came across um, Roland Hazard um, several years ago um, at a gunfight. And uh, the, my, my fight wasn't with him. It was with uh, one of his pals. And uh, as often happened in my gunfights, I uh, squared up with him and started to go for my gun and kind of fumbled it a little bit. And the uh, gun went off, it, not, not exactly where I wanted it to. And um, I ended up shooting a shovel off to the side on the street I was leaning up against the post bullet ricocheted off of that shovel and went straight through Roland's pal's heart killed him killed him right away and uh that's kind of how I got my uh my nickname uh dumb luck that's what they call me Bill dumb luck Bill McLean uh, I got this knack for shooting people and uh whether I, whether I, I, I intend to shoot him or not, or, uh, and I, I never figured I was that good of a shot, but uh, it always seems to hit where it's, where it's going to go. And, uh, you know, ever since then, people just started gunning for me because uh, I kind of seemed like an easy target until I wasn't. And, uh, you know, it, it, my, my, sort of knack for winning despite myself encouraged people to 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 gun for me and uh roland uh was not the least of those men since i killed his pal and uh i just kind of wanted to stay st stay out of that life I, I, I it's uh you know several years of uh people gun on gunning for you wears on you and uh just trying to get away from that So, um, Roland, uh, kind of has it out for you because you killed his buddy. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, I, I look quite a bit different back then. You know, I didn't have this bushy beard and, uh, wasn't quite as, as dusty and bedraggled as I am now. But, uh, I, I, I imagine if, if he got a good look in my eyes, he'd recognize who I was. Okay. Well, you'll be, uh, and just to kind of describe uh, the scene on the street uh, as you're uh, hitching up the, uh, the horse, um, the custom here within the last several weeks uh, since the, uh, the Coyote Gang has come into town is people just very quickly scuttle from place to place. Uh, and if they got across the street, it's at a pretty... Uh, pretty speedy little trot uh, to go from one place to another. You can see that, you know, the, the, the town is on edge, uh, that they never know when a bullet is going to go flying. Uh, so they move from place to place pretty quickly and always with purpose. Um, and they try to stay indoors as much as possible. So the streets are fairly dead, you know, other than a couple of people, you know, going from place to place, you know, and <coughs> they come out of one place and go in another and then you don't see them again. Um, and you'll be entering the, uh, the tavern, uh, just as, um, the conversation between Miss Tipple and Elias, uh, begin. So we'll switch back to uh, the pair of them as, as you're coming in. Ma'am? Hello, Elias. How are you? Well, it's been a dreary day, hasn't it? Yeah, I've certainly had better ones. I just wanted to tell you thank you for making your presence known. It, it means a lot. You know, turnout for these things are not too high lately. Well, can you blame anybody? Well, no, I suppose not. Well, well, Judge McCarthy was a good man, so there should have been more people there. But I, rec I reckon everybody should have come. Maybe if they had, 
I don't know. Things could be different. We could go back to the way things used to be. Or we could walk around and not look over our shoulders every time we had to cross the street. I don't, I don't think know. it's ever going to go back. Ever since the marshal died, it's just gone downhill around here. I don't know if we can give up all hope, can we? I mean, is that all that we have left now is to just sit and wait to die? Drink! Always the optimist. <laughs> That's what keeps me going. Do you mind if I join you? Sure. Go right ahead. Thank you. Hey, Buck, two more over here. Coming your way. Now, sit down at the table and just kind of sit there with my drink. Um, and the uh, bartender comes over. Uh, drops a couple more drinks uh, to you, and uh, taps Elias on the shoulder, and he and he kind of whispers in your ear. He says, "Man, I tell you, old Miss Tipple here sure knows how to toss him back. I don't know where she comes up with all the money, but she always pays her bill." Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Buck. Thanks, Buck. So, I appreciate the drink, Miss Tipple. Uh, you didn't need to buy it for me. Elias, you're a, you've always been a good man to everybody in this town. I don't mind buying you a drink. Well, it's really not necessary. I mean, I have the means. I, I wouldn't want to, to put you out. Uh, I, I don't know what your situation is. Allow me to buy this round, please. Unless you insist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if you insist, then I'm happy to have you buy my drink. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Elias, you uh, don't seem yourself today. I just, things are just, they're just bad. I mean, I, I have to believe that we can do something, that, that, that things will get better. I just, but this is, I just don't know what the words are. I, I mean, don't you think that at some point something's going to change? Well, I would like to hope so, but I don't see how. Unless everybody came together, well, that won't was, happen. Wilbur was telling me about a fellow that's been coming to his shop. I believe he said his name was Bill. And at this point, the the saloon doors swing open, <laughs> and this this big bushy headed, uh, long bearded fella just kind of stumbles into the bar, uh, and uh, uh, the whole bar kind of goes silent. This is a new face. It's somebody that's definitely not from around here, and. Uh, you definitely don't recognize as one of the uh, Crimson Coyote gang either. It's a stranger. Right. And I um, walk up to the bar uh, <clears throat> and uh, I guess I'll sit down there. I assume there are some stools and uh, mm -hmm. um, get the attention of the bartender and uh, ask for a, a whiskey with a good amount of water in it, please. Well... Uh, sure, feller. Um, welcome to Devil's Canyon. Don't think I've seen you around here before. Mm, uh, I've been in the town to the store a couple times, but it's my first time in here. Um, set up camp out on the outskirts of town, the old ghost ranch. Oh, oh yeah, the old ghost ranch up there. <laughs> Hadn't seen much going on in a while. You're up by the cave, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, um, just uh, shacking up in the old church building. Figure it keeps me honest, and what's left of the Holy Ghost in there might uh, might help me stay safe. 
Uh, you know, that old Pueblo uh, building church there is uh, pretty sturdy. Uh, the ranch itself, as you I'm sure have seen, is pretty run down. I think it belonged to the uh, first family uh, that settled in this area. So there wasn't a whole lot around at that point. The town hadn't even been founded by that, uh, by that time. Uh, but that church is still standing, got good bones. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been real comfortable so far. I can't complain. Well, well, uh, sir, you plan on staying for a while? Um, well, you never know. It uh, seems seems to be a little bit of trouble going on down here. So, uh, just thought I'd come down and take a look and have something to drink while I'm here. Uh, you got a keen eye on you there for sure. A lot of trouble down here. Just. Keep your head low. That's all I got to say. I'll do my best. Thank you. Stay off the streets at night. Will do. All right. What, uh, what are you all's reaction to this new fella coming in? Good say Lord hello, Quincy. Elias, who is that? From your butthole. You? That's what you do. Hi, Kenny. <laughs> I'm not mistaken, Miss Tipple. I hey. Believe... Oh. <laughs> back. The blacksmith is here. <laughs> oh, and he's frozen again. Uh, if you're trying to talk, you're muted. <laughs> nope. Still can't hear you. <laughs> Yo. Okay, there you are. Very well. Mm, no, I still can't time. understand you. Try oh well, it's working on better have. internet. Sorry. Well, now everybody else is frozen. <clears throat> I'm telling you, dude. I think do, I'm the do maximum. You guys, do you guys have I'm the maximum? <laughs> I, think I think it might be one leave. too many people. I well, can you're, hear you're every now. single word. Um, <laughs> okay. I can hear you as well. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, that's Continue. that's better now. Maybe your internet just needed to catch up. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> Terribible. All Terribible. right, so uh, <clears throat> we were, uh, uh, Dana. I think you were saying that you were, you were starting to talk there. Good Lord in heaven, Elias, who is that? Miss Tipple, I believe that may be Bill. Did you notice a man on the ridge at the funeral today? Uh, maybe. I don't remember. That's the man Wilburn was telling me about. He might be the answer to our prayers. If you would excuse me a moment, I'd like to try to have a word with him. See you later. <laughs> uh, he's sitting at the bar? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to go over and sit next to him. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, sir. You would not have happened to have been present at the funeral today, would you? Um, From at a afar. distance. Yeah, you got you got pretty good eyes for an undertaker. Uh, yeah, I see a lot, I suppose. So, you're new to town. I, I didn't, I'm afraid I don't know your name. Uh, name's Bill McLean. Oh, Bill Elias Carver. Pleasure to meet you. Have you been to town much before? The general store? Or... Oh, who who you been talking to, Mr. Carver? Well, I don't talk to a lot of people. Most of the people I come in contact with don't have much to say on account of being dead. But I do have friends. What brings you to town, Bill? Oh, uh, well, Mr. Carver, um, as much as I 
try to avoid meetings with undertakers. Um, I will tell you that uh, I came to Devil's Canyon or the outskirts thereof to uh, try to get away from things, get away from people, get away from uh, the life that I've been leading for a while and uh, doesn't seem to be working too well. I uh, been here long enough to see what what's happening to this town and um, I'm having trouble uh, staying out of it. So I uh, thought I'd come down all the way into town and uh, take a look for myself and see what was going on. What do you see going on? Uh, looks like this uh, this gang of fellas that's in town is uh, kind of ruining things for everybody. A lot of people dying. Uh, Looked like you buried the judge today, and uh, from my experience, a uh, town without uh, law and order really lacks some direction, and um, that's 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 a, a, a tipping point, and uh, had trouble letting it go. You see a lot, Bill. You see it true. The judge is gone. There is no law in this town anymore. Do you intend to stay? Uh, well, that I don't know. I, I, I've seen a lot, a lot of, a lot of violence and a lot of, a lot of death in my time, and I don't have any particular uh, desire to take part in that. Um, but my, uh, I guess my, 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 my better nature is getting the best of me, and uh, I, I'm, I'm getting tired of seeing this happen to nice folks here. I reckon you may be quite welcome here, sir. I personally welcome you. If you ever need anything, you come see me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Buck, I'd like to buy this man a drink. And I may as well send one to Miss Tipple as well. Well, that's you your, keep asking your, your, for him. Your friend I'll keep there. Delivering. Uh, That's your friend in the corner, Mr. Carver? An acquaintance, yes. Looks like she's had a couple too many already. Oh, I believe that's just her constant state. <laughs> Would you like to be introduced? Uh, why not? Here to me. Well, come on over. I'll, Buck, if you wouldn't mind bringing another round of drinks. It's been a sad day. We may as well all try and find a little bit of levity in it. Take them over to Miss Tipples. All right. While that conversation is going on, um, Lillian and uh, Julius, uh, what, what's your reaction? I'd say that this uh, this man who's entered the bar has some very dark energy about him. He's definitely haunted by some demons, and. Um, you know, I think, I think this might shake up the town a little bit. And I wonder if his, if his Pueblo up there, his, uh, his Pueblo church up there on the ridge gets good sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> I think it certainly does. And perhaps also because it's this, because it's this up on the hill, and given it's, History. Perhaps it could also have other energies. It could be the com perfect combination we're looking for of bright sunlight and some sort of spiritual energy. I wonder if we could talk him into having our seance there tonight on the hill. Perhaps his dark energy could be interesting to see if it could lead to somewhere. This seems promising and, and being on the outskirts of town, we might evade the constant the constant um, attentions of the coyote gang. Better than doing it in the end room or here in the tavern. Maybe the only. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, certain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I think, I think we should ask him. I think we should ask him. Do you, who do you? I think you might be better at uh, approaching him than me. Um, what do you think, given your acting ability? 
and I don't often come off very well with the locals here. He doesn't seem local though, but with people even in this part of the country. So perhaps you should approach him. Certainly, yes. Okay. Uh, Rusty, uh, are you still there? Rusty? Your mic is muted, Rusty. As soon as I move on, uh, I'm sure he'll probably click click back in. So uh, let's move on. <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, that was from Mike. Um, okay, so... Uh, the two mics were uh, were heading over to join uh, Miss Tipple there and, and introduce uh, uh, Bill. So you may proceed with that, Miss Tipple. This is Bill McLean. Is that correct, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. Bill McLean. Pleased to meet you. Uh, I've seen you before. Have you seen me before? Or That's you what have I seen said. Me? Have I seen you before? Well, ma'am, I can't speak to that, but uh, I've been only been in town a couple of times. So I think that's that's unlikely. Well, maybe so, but you seem real familiar all of a sudden. Well, I got that kind of face. Well, you're going to sit down and have a drink? You're welcome. I suppose I will. Uh, you mind if I uh, sit with my back to the corner there? <clears throat> well, this is my usual spot. I just but think... I suppose, I suppose I can scoot on over a little bit. I just feel like things might go much better if, I'd, if I'm just facing out towards the room. I understand. Have a seat. Well, thank you. Elias, are you going to join us? Certainly. Uh, Buck should be bringing another round of drinks. Um, I'd be more than happy to sit down and join you. Thank you. And Lillian and Julius, you see this occurring where uh, he's being introduced to the, uh, the town drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Lillian, it occurs to me that perhaps um, we may just approach all three of them because think about it. We have the town pastor there, just finished the funeral. We have the we have she's been drinking quite a bit, so she could be quite open to sort of spiritual incursions. And then, of course, there's the the man that stays up there, we're going to need his permission in the dark inn. And we could ask all of them to be as part of it tonight, see if they'd be interested. This may work. So I'd say, um, sir, I, I saw you come in and I, where I come from, usually a gentleman would not ask a lady to move. This is, this is an interesting custom. How do you explain yourself? Uh, it's, it's not so much a custom, ma'am, as it is. Uh, I just like, like being able to keep my eyes on the room, that's all. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Do you usually keep company, sir? Or are you, are you less accustomed to the community well i i i uh i generally try to avoid company when i can um but um i thought i would come down into town and see how 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 y'all were doing and and see see how things were considering um what i've what i've seen going on in town over the past few weeks um have you been here long? It, it seems like uh, seems like that that 
coyote bunch is, is causing trouble for everybody. It, it seems like I've been here an eternity, but I haven't been here that long. Have they caused you any trouble? Well, I think these gentlemen might have a little more to say on that matter, but I, um, I appreciate your coming down to the town to, um, to be with the town folk on this Saturday. Uh, it's, it's my unfortunate pleasure, ma'am. Um, and, and your name? I'm Lillian Ida Ellis. Nice to meet you, Miss Ellis. And uh, I'm who's, your, who, who's your fancy friend here? <laughs> well, I'll introduce him in a moment, but I would say I've, I've taken such a strong feeling from you that I do hope I'll be able to visit you at some point in your own, in your own home. Well, I'm sure I don't know what you mean, ma'am. Well, as you have come to, to our home in this, in this valley, I, I hope you'll allow us to return the favor and accompany you to your own environment, which I understand is possibly hospitable to the experiments of my friend, um, Dr. Julius Randolph. Well, I... Uh... I don't know nothing about no experiments, but uh, I'm happy to talk to your fancy friend here. Mr. Randolph, is it? Doctor? Yes, hello. How are you? I, yes, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lillian, just, uh, yes. We, well, you see, I'm a bit of a scientist, and uh, we'd like to, but we, I, need, we, I need to be up on the hill, you see. And I, I, I heard that you were staying up there on the, uh, I kind of overheard your conversation. And you, I'm sorry about that, but I, you're staying up there up on the hill. Uh, y yes, uh, up the old, uh, the old Pueblo church up there. I've been squatting up there for a few weeks now. and um, it's, it's nice and quiet up there. Is it, um, is, so you, it's not, you own the property or is there another owner or is it abandoned? I mean, what? Uh... Um, well, I don't know. It is abandoned. All I know is I'm staying there. Yeah. Um, I haven't haven't laid claim to it or nothing, but uh, it's it's been home home for the past few weeks. Well, I, I wonder if we might borrow it for a, a, a bit. I mean, not you can certainly stay there. Just if we could, well, I mean, maybe we could perhaps have we could even. Wouldn't it be fun? I mean, I'm I'm from outside as well, and wouldn't it be fun if we brought dinner up to you? I couldn't tell. Uh, <laughs> Well, perhaps we could bring dinner to your place tonight, and we'll bring some some drinks and everything too, some whiskey, some wine. We'll ask our dear friend here, and perhaps we can have a little event. And did you know, uh, my friend that you just met here, Lillian, here is a, she's a magician's assistant. Perhaps we can do some magic of some kind, do some entertainment. But uh, you know, maybe us, us outsiders could have a little celebration up there, away from the town. Um, well, I don't know know much about. Uh magic and all that mumbo jumbo but uh figured as, I, as i'm squatting there you, you all have as much right to be there as i do so uh i guess well, i can't stop you well like we'd just like to have maybe like a picnic but maybe just you know having we're a little worried about these this gang that's here and we're a little worried about socializing in town so perhaps if we could do it up at your place and of course we'd love to have you join us um, and actually, anyone here that's at the table, we'd love to have you join us too. Uh, we have we will have free wine and other drinks available if you'd like to join us. Um, well, I, I, I try not to drink terribly much, as it uh, impairs my senses uh, a little more than I care for it too. But uh, fine food as well. You no need. Aren't to you um, a little concerned about? These uh, these fellas in town, these coyote fellas, might think it a little suspicious that a bunch of people gather outside of town, a bunch of, bunch of relatively new folks to town, getting together. Um, I, I worry that might be a little suspicious. Well, I, I, perhaps, but I just simply know that I can't stay in my room alone for <laughs> much 
I've been here a week already and I'm starting to go a little crazy. I feel isolated, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like quarantined or something. So perhaps, you know, it would be wonderful to get out somewhere and perhaps social, social, just see other people. And I don't know, you, some of us outsiders could get together and perhaps it would be the perfect event. Um, well, I, I can't stop you. I, I, I wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind seeing you folks up there. Well, thank you very much. So perhaps just think of it as a picnic and we can all get to know each other a little bit better. And, you know, I think it will be a grand, uh, Mr. Eli, uh, uh, Mr. Past, pastor, pastor, is it? You consider yourself a preacher or a pastor? What, what, what is your? Oh, neither. I'm the undertaker. Oh, undertaker. I don't deal with the deities as much as I deal with just the bodies. Well, would you care to join us too? I know you've had a terrible day probably with this funeral and all the pressure from things happening in this town. We'd love to have you join us for a little dinner and perhaps we could talk as well. We, uh, we have some common interests, we think. I'm invited as well. Absolutely. Well, yeah, Lillian, yes, I think so, yes. Elias, your presence is essential, I feel. Mm -hmm. Miss Tipple, of course, you're here and we will have uh, plenty of libations as well as food if you partake and join us as well. We don't want to leave anyone out. We'd love to have you with us. Tipple? Yeah, she's having some trouble talking, perhaps. She's had a bit too much. Maybe she takes a brief nap. She can join us a little later. I'd be happy to go. <laughs> and I have an idea of how we could get up there. Yeah. What's the idea? Well, there's a, there's a cavern out back of the, the blacksmith shop where he stores uh, um, extra extra uh, uh, metals and things like that. And I know of a passageway that goes up to the mountain and takes you to a pass, and we can take it up there all the way up to the Pueblo. Okay, let me stop you for just a moment right there. Oh, I, no. I, I like what you've done, uh, but but you are introducing a truth to the story here. Shit. Okay. Uh, so in order to make that a fact, uh, you'll need to spend a plot point, uh, plot point. to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do it. So now you have a little secret passage uh, to get you in and out of town uh, behind the blacksmith's shop. Uh, so uh, that's, that's an excellent way to get in and out without being seen. So uh, this, and we'll take this kind of as an example of introducing a truth uh, to the story. Everything you guys have been doing so far is basically just role playing and talking to one another. But now we're, we're changing something really about the story uh, and uh, perfectly acceptable as long as you got a plot point to actually spend. Uh, so yeah, I think that works out pretty well. Uh, and I think with um, where we are in the story now, you've, uh, Bill, you've got uh, several strangers now that have approached you, <laughs> this mysterious dude in town, uh, the, the new stranger, so to speak, and uh, basically inviting themselves to your property <laughs> that is not exactly <laughs> your property. Uh, I would say that that, uh, that probably puts you in a slightly uncomfortable situation. Uh, yeah. So we will move on to chapter two, uh, which is uh, a meeting uh, chapter. Uh, so at this point, everybody gets a plot point uh, to add uh, to their pile. We all had a plot point from the last one, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So and they, they uh, carry forward chapter to chapter. They do. Mm -hmm. So other than Miss Tipple, everybody has two uh, plot points. Miss Tipple has one. Uh, and as we move into this chapter, and we know kind of now uh, what direction we're going, we need to look at our motivations. Uh, so looking at where we are in the story right now, what, uh, what do you say uh, your motivations are? We'll start with, uh, with Bill. Um, I'd say Bill's motivations are switching from just trying to keep to himself and stay out of trouble and stay away from trouble and um, 
avoid conflict to um, I think he's he's starting to kind of move over into a reluctant uh, sense of duty and and he's um, starting to warm up to the idea that um, conflict can be used for good or used to better things um, rather than you know his history of people bringing the fight to him unnecessarily um, to kind of turn turn things around and and kind of take control of that kind of situation okay so uh, how would you word that in a sentence do you think uh, your motivation um, Gosh, I don't know if I can distill it down like that. Um, Would you say maybe um, reluctantly taking a stand? Yes, that that's that's quite good. I feel like you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I get paid the big bucks. That's right. <laughs> All right. What about uh, Miss Tipple? Oh, Miss Tipple enjoys company. She uh, she just likes to get to know everybody a little bit. Um, um, trying to think of how else I can say that. Is it a fear of loneliness, or she, is it just a genuine interest in people or trouble? Oh, she's interested in people and their trouble. She just likes to be around um, uh, in any kind of scenario. She enjoys uh, watching conflict and she will, um, I don't know how to say this. Uh, I'm stuck. Help me out, Greg. <laughs> um, knowing, knowing a little bit more about your character's background, yeah. more so than what the, uh, the players know. Yeah. Um, would you say that you're maybe just kind of uh, feeling these guys out and seeing what their capabilities are. That's why I enjoy being around them. Okay. It serves them to get to know them a little bit. Perhaps share a drink or two. Okay. So I'll put feeling the others out. Is that there cool? Yep. Um, Lillian. Okay. Um, I feel that we're heading toward a, a bit of a seance. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I kind of want to, like, un, un, I want to let the dogs off the leash. What is it? <laughs> I, you know, it's been a while. Let the dogs out? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a while. I used to, I used to really commune with spirits a lot um but since i've been on the road sort of on the lamp i'm i'm going under the radar a lot and really holding things back and i i feel that among the crowd that's going to be there the only one i don't have a good sense about is bill but i feel i've heard enough from Elias to know where he stands. I know, I know Julius is a believer. Um, Miss Tipple, I, I instinctively trust a woman. Um, so I, I believe she's to be trusted. And, you know, then again, I, my instinct score is zero. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, out of any scrape I get into. Um, by, by trusting the wrong people. But Bill's yep. the only one I'm really sure of his motivations and uh, and I feel like we'll probably be protected. So so I'm, I'm really um, feeling conflicted and want to get back in touch with those guiding forces that I felt so strongly in California while, while now I'm I sort of at loose ends. And I hope that um, the, the experience brings Julius some progress in, in what he's searching for because I, I do think he's a good person. Okay. So get back in touch with guiding forces maybe would be your motivation. Okay. Uh, Julius. Well, 
I uh, I like you know Lillian as a person, but I'm particularly interested now in if what she says is actually true. Because if it is true, it can have huge implications. Um, you know, we've, we've touched upon it before. I've, I've experienced it before, but but not to the degree that she describes. And if we can actually, if I can get her to, or she can, if we can create it, create this seance together, if I can learn from that and make sure she's not a charlatan. I mean, I do trust her, but most people that are following magicians' troops around aren't, uh, you know, are magicians. So the question is, is this for real? And so my motivation right now, my immediate motivation is to find out if this is for real. Um, and which involves having to get more people involved because you can't have a seance with two people. We know that from past experience. Um, you know, but grander motivation is pretty obvious. Got to get this tazimeter built. Uh, this hill is a good option. And, um, you know, if we can, if this experiment proves true, we're 90% of the way there. We just need to build the machine. Uh, so your main motivation then is to find out if the spirit world exists. No, I know the spirit right? world exists because I've, we've okay. been, able, I've been able to connect to it through my own, so not to the degree that she has, but we mm -hmm. have, and plus my early experiments with phase one and two of the tazimeter have broken out little, shown promising momentary possibilities but never to the degree that she's described. But so if we can harness the power of the tazimeter combined with what her abilities are, we may just be able to open something, a portal or much larger. So harness the power of the tazimeter then, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be like, I'll learn enough scientifically to be able to make the right adjustments from what she does or if I'll need her help mm -hmm. directly. I don't know. We'll have to see once. I have okay. to see. So I, my main intention okay. is to get this experiment moving tonight, to get this, or in the next couple of days if it doesn't happen tonight. We need to see what what can happen. We need to see if this is possible. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, Elias. Uh, my motivation is essentially to stop the constant death and finally connect with people and try to bring some new life back to Devil's Canyon. Uh, and at this point, I'm willing to explore any options, whether it's an outsider that comes in to save us or, you know, I, well, I guess I don't know that we're possibly doing a seance yet. So, but I mean, there are new people in town and they're all interested in getting together and I was invited. So that is new. Uh, and getting okay. So I'm just hoping my motivation is just to try to. I guess, yeah. Um, just end the death cycle that Devil's Canyon has gone into. So, okay. With All the right. Crimson Coyote Gang. Well, everybody make sure and make a note of your motivation on your sheet. Uh, and it is almost exactly 11 o'clock here, my time. Um, and if uh, Mike, I know uh, you're it's what midnight there for you, yeah. Uh, and you probably and I think you said you had to get up pretty, pretty early in the morning, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm driving to Cleveland tomorrow. Mm, that's fun, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we could certainly this is a, a good stopping point if we wanted to stop here. Uh, and I mean, uh, I'll leave that up to the uh. The gang as a whole. If uh, Mike, if you if you need to go, totally understandable. We'll and this is when we were going to stop anyway, so that's kind of what I had planned tonight. But if you guys want to go on, I'm I'm willing to stick around for a little while longer. I'll leave it all up to y'all. Yeah, I mean, I I I do need to go because uh, mm -hmm. I need to get to bed. But um, you know, I I can pick up on plot points if you guys continue on and and you know, educate myself for the, the following session, but um, other, otherwise, that, that's, that's my input. Well, I think, um, I think we are probably at a good spot. Well, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Mike's at midnight, right? You're at midnight where it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. So I'd say uh, this is probably a good stopping point. Uh, mm -hmm. I think once we get into the actual meeting portion of this, it, it could get pretty meaty. <laughs> uh, so uh, I would say we should probably go ahead and call it for tonight and then reconvene in about two weeks' time, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And everybody, the Zoom link should work. Uh, I set it up as reoccurring, so you can just go in the same line every time. Cool. And I will say uh, where where this is going right now, totally left field from where I thought uh, <laughs> we, we might end up. So that's uh, that's good. That's good. I'm 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 uh, excited to see where this goes. So uh, yeah, yeah, I like it. it broke the novel. Huh? Sorry. Broke the novel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have to, to recalibrate. Right? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 not breaking anything. Uh, we're we're creating, and I think that's the magic of this uh, particular system. Uh, and I think what's what's great about it is that you know I've got a lot of people that I have a lot of faith in in being able to collaborate with. So uh, I, that's I think what makes this really very special, and that we're bringing the the gang together so this is this is cool i like it now thanks for bringing us together chris is really fun yeah yeah very much. good good well i'm I'm glad we're we're going to be able to make this a thing and we didn't even roll one single die tonight <laughs> How about that? No, I was just, we only used one mechanic and it was in an hour and 48 minutes right i mean yeah yeah that's like, pretty impressive isn't it tabletop game where <laughs> I mean, you know, I played in minimal tabletop games with minimal mechanics, but never one where you haven't used any mechanic or rolled a dice. Yet. We didn't roll a dice all night. No. Uh, uh, Ryan, who unfortunately was just in briefly <laughs> with us, uh, he was a part of a, a Marvel game that I was running in the, uh, the cinematic universe, and it was uh, kind of in between... Um, the second Avengers film and uh, Civil War. Uh, and we had reached the point of Civil War where the Sokovia Accords uh, kind of came into play uh, and so forth. And we had um, three sessions that took place inside a courtroom. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and we had a couple of little things that would happen like in between times, but we had several, one instance where all it was was just a courtroom scene uh, for the entire session uh, and didn't, didn't roll a single die uh, during that either, but it was some, some great role playing. So this is the kind of stuff that, uh, that I really enjoy. So, all right, well, guys. That was awesome. Looking forward to uh, two weeks. I, I hate that we have to wait two weeks to do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so this is a this is a thing, and I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, me too. Nice yeah. to see everybody. See you all. Good to meet everybody. Nice, nice to meet you, Mike. Thanks. Nice to meet you. All right. All right. Well, you you guys have a good night. Everybody have a good night. See you in a couple weeks. Nice. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right. See you. See you. Bye bye.